Hey sailors, for the past two years we have been traveling full time on a boat and we have shared almost every single moment with you. New videos on our channel usually pick up on last week's timeline, but sometimes we make exceptions. No, it's so confusing! And that seems to be confusing. Let me explain. Last week we crossed to Gran Tarajal on Fuerteventura and this week we press on to Moro Jable. And if you want to see the full length cut of this sailing trip, check out the video that appears on the top right corner of the screen. Because we used this day in a video from a few weeks back to announce that our new crew member is on the way. And as a loyal viewer, you have already seen it. So if you rather want to see what's new this week on STLT, give us a thumbs up and simply keep watching. This week we are on anchor in Morochable and enjoy one of the few quiet days on anchor this season. Ready? Ready. You know better than that. You do. Ah! Since the world is on hold and only slowly recovers, we don't encounter many sailors along the way, let alone young cruisers. We try hard to be the best version of ourselves it is difficult to remember how to socialize after months of solitude. We do okay and are accepted by the group. The anchorage is protected and finally we feel at home. We will get the ch <coughs> We will get the chance to test out a jet surf. See what happens with a prop that hasn't been painted after five months in the water. The best thing to do is go and clean that thing with a steel brush. And Mandy shares a vital ingredient of our boat life diet. Spicy. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. Seems warm today, so I think I'm gonna go in the water again and check the prop anode that fell off four months ago uh, on our crossing to Lanzarote. Um, we had the donut, so that's fine. I'm gonna have a look at that. It's probably gonna be eaten halfway. Got the right screws. Let's see if I can do it without oxygen. Come join me. Just like a cool breeze, Jack. We decided to go without prop paint this year and in hindsight I think that was a mistake. It's nice and shiny for a bit, but this is what it looks like after 5 months in cold Atlantic waters. Imagine the growth in the med. Yeah, we could scrub it more often, but then that's another job on the list of things that could be avoided. But I'm missing the point. Today's job is to get the tip of the prop clean, so I can attach the sacrificial prop anode. It is necessary to have direct contact with the prop so the anode can work effectively. But a household broom brush is futile. The next best thing we have is this stainless scraper, but it's straight and the prop is round. And without oxygen, I don't manage to take a proper look and clean it properly. I use it to get rid of some growth on the blades though, that's worth something. Honestly, I think the best thing to do is go and clean that thing with a steel brush because if there's still a layer on top of it I don't think it's gonna do much the donut seems fine so it's gonna be a job for another day get a steel brush because that's not strong enough and then do it in like a dirty marina or something halfway successful the prop is actually quite dirty I didn't expect that but yeah, well, it didn't paint it last time and that's already five months. So considering that, it's quite good. I uh, had to clean some shell-ish thing from the rudder. That's why it actually didn't move that well. 
And now cleaning the prop a bit, but I just don't have the breath. I can't do it. I don't know, it's too cold and I didn't do any breathing exercise. So I have to do it again and then get the steel brush and brush the prop clean so I can actually attach the anode to the surface of the prop. Half success, half a success guys. Today I'm in Mandy's long wetsuit, so everyone can admire my figure. And we're gonna go jet surf. Friends of ours have a petrol powered surfboard, which is incredibly loud, but it's also quite fun. It's working, I'm late, let's see. Na ja, geht so. Geht so? Hier? Äh, geht so. Das hier ist das Gaspedal. Ja. Hier, ganz normal wie bei der Carrera-Bahn. Zum Starten relativ viel Gas geben. Fast Vollgas. Ja. Weil sonst kommst du nicht aus dem Wasser. Du bist, wenn das Board aus ist, nie auf dem Board. Das ist so die Grundregel. Okay. Weil sonst läuft es schneller mit Wasser voll und dann sind die Fahreigenschaften schlecht. Das geht nicht oh. unter, aber fährt einfach nicht mehr so geil. Zum Starten legst du dich quasi so neben das Board. Das ist links und rechts. Ah. Was bist du Goofy oder? Goofy, ja. Und Rechtshänder? Ja. Gut, dann ist so wie ich jetzt. Hast du das Ding in der Hand? Ja. Greifst dich hier dran fährt. Beim Starten wird es dich drehen und zwar gewaltig. Deswegen ziehe irgendwie dahin, wo du nicht hin willst. Ja. Und du robbst nicht so drauf. Ja, und dann erstmal im Liegen einfach mit Gewichtausgleich rechts, links ja. äh, lenken. Falls es dir ausgeht, einfach runterhüpfen sofort, Stöpsel raus. Äh, ist einfach ein Magnet. Immer gleich ausmachen, weil der hat keinen Startknopf. Ja. Das heißt, der geht einfach nach zwei Sekunden oder drei Sekunden wieder an, wenn er drin bleibt. Aha. Und das willst du nicht, weil wenn es dich gerade runtergehauen hat und das Board liegt irgendwie so. Ja, dann zieh ich den halt raus. Und dann ja. fährt er dir den Kopf ab. Das Ding funktioniert mit Vollgas sehr gut. Ja. Und macht auch dann am meisten Spaß. <lacht> ja, dann bitte. Ja, super. Willst du die Kamera gleich hier drauf machen? Die ersten Male sind die Gesichtsausdrücke sind die schönsten. Ja, dann machen wir das doch. Okay, aber wenn ich Goofy fahre, gehe ich dann von der Seite rauf? Nee. So. Okay. So, jetzt steck rein und dann geht's los, ja? Leck mich fett. <lacht> ah! 11 PS. 11 PS? Ja, das ist ja nichts. Genau, das ist nicht so viel. Das ist ja krass, ey. Weiter so. Die Geschwindigkeit ist schon gut. Das Schwierigste beim Aufstehen ist eigentlich nicht das Aufstehen selber, sondern die Geschwindigkeit. Also Kontrolle über das Gas bekommen ist ein Arno. Ah, das ist anstrengend. Ja, komm, wir tauschen mal. Zeig mal, wie das richtig ist. In a way, riding a jet surf is a mix of surfing and snowboarding. It works best in quiet waters, like lakes. Once the water gets choppy, it is quite difficult as you lose grip when doing involuntary airtime. A quiet anchorage seems to be the best place to ride. 
if you're deaf. I'll turn up the sound for just a second. And that is why we went around the corner away from boats. Apparently, these kinds of engines are used in little racing bikes, and they definitely sound like it. On the website of JetSurf, all the riders wear helmets, and I understand why. When going full throttle, you will reach 50 km per hour, that's 30 miles an hour. A little innocent swell can turn into a proper speed bump and twist you off the board with quite some force. It's great fun, and I wish I wasn't such a spaghetti man with no condition at all. <laughs> All right, that thing is crazy. It's crazy loud and it's crazy fast. 11 horsepower, more than three of our dinghies together. Like if you have a bit of wave, it just smacks you so hard. I want to try an electrical one. So if we come across one of those, definitely gonna do that too. Boat life, or well, all life, is better with good food. And one way to make food better is by adding hot sauce. So let me show you how I make my famous fermented sriracha sauce. Today we are gonna make hot sauce. And for that we're gonna need 140 grams of red peppers. We're gonna need five garlic gloves and a piece of ginger. You are also gonna need some salt. I used about 10 grams on 140 grams of peppers here, vinegar, and also some water if you leave your red peppers lying around too long and they dry out a bit like mine here. So let's start by cleaning the garlic. You can cut them up a bit if you want, but if you have a good blender, it should be able to handle the whole clove, I reckon. Then we are gonna get the skin of the ginger and I still like to cut that up a bit too. Next up are the red peppers. Take the green off, cut it in any size you like, or don't cut it at all if you don't like cutting peppers. All right, here we go. Now just toss it all in the blender, add some water, add some vinegar, no real measurements here, just wing it. And then toss in your salt. There is probably a correct amount of salt to weight ratio, but I kind of just do what feels right. Now don't forget to put on a lid because this stuff is spicy and it will burn in your nostrils. Apart from that, you don't want red peppers on your ceiling. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more fluids, but the dangerous thing is that if you open this, it's gonna burn so hard in your nose. Okay, here we go. So be careful to stay away from it. A little bit of vinegar still. Again. Here you see the struggle between man and machine. It's always a fight between me and the blender. Can you smell it then? Is it going into your nostrils? Oh, I love it. Wow, it hurts so bad. <coughs> that is spicy. Woo. All right, next run. It just won't really work the way I want to. So the trick here is to shake the blender. 
I'm not really sure if the little motor in the blender likes that, but it gives me my desired result. A creamy substance. But we're getting there. Look. If you don't have enough of the red peppers, you need to be a bit patient. Or a smaller blender, I guess. And you shouldn't let them dry in as much as we did. Here we have a piece of cloth. And we're gonna put that over. With a little bit of a... Go wait. What is those things called? Elastic? When you have it all done and you put it in your jar and you cover it with a little cloth, you're just going to put it somewhere where it gets no direct sunlight and you're going to leave it for about four to seven, eight, nine, ten days. Kind of depends on how sour you want to have it and how hot it is. The hotter it is, the faster it goes. And just every day stir it a little bit and then after a few days you will see some bubbles coming up and then you know it's going to be good. And after that, you can eat it and it's going to be so good and really spicy. After these fantastically warm and quiet days on anchor, we change course 180 degrees and head out for a long day of chilly and excitingly rough sailing. The wind and waves seem to be perfect, albeit a bit intense, to make our way over to the next island, Gran Canaria. With my 22 week pregnant belly, it is a slight challenge when things get very bumpy, but we safely make it across and tie up in the marina of Las Palmas, where our friends are waiting for us again. Since this is the perfect place to do boat jobs, we pull out our to-do list and start working on getting Blue Atlantic Crossing and Baby ready. If you want to know what it takes to get your boats across the Big Blue, then hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on our next episodes. I don't like that.